send your diver to the bow of the survey boat. Right. Team nine, you're going to send yours underneath the stern. Team eight, you're going to try and get yours to that ladder right there. On the bottom. Yeah, in the middle of the pier. Hi, my name is Bill Gordon. I'm one of the instructors at the NOAA Diving Center in Seattle, Washington. In this training video, you will learn how and when to deploy a line tended standby diver, both as a line tender and a line tended diver. OSHA subject dives always require standby divers to be present in case of an emergency. Either a buddy team or a single line tended diver must be used. Launching a buddy team requires a total of three topside personnel, a dive master and two divers working together as a buddy team. If a diving operation has a limited number of people available, OSHA also allows for the use of two topside personnel. A dive master that is also the line tender and a line tended standby diver. What is a line tended standby diver? A line tended standby diver is tied into a tending line that is tended by the topside support personnel who will remain on surface throughout all diving operations. The line tended standby diver must be dressed in, pre-dive checked, and tied in before you launch any divers into the water to do any work. In this video, you will learn about the various aspects that are necessary to use a line tended standby diver safely, including any specific NOAA requirements. After reviewing the equipment and the basic line pull signals, we will demonstrate how to set up your dive site, how to set up the diver, and how line pull signals should be given and answered. We will also show you rescue procedures during a mock emergency scenario. And finally, we will review any special considerations and the key points. If you are going to use a line tended standby diver with a tending line, the selection of the line is very important. Your line tended standby diver needs to be able to reach your team wherever they find themselves conducting diving operations. That's very critical. Because I'm tethered, it does me no good as a rescuer or you as a buddy team if I can't reach you to respond to an emergency. So when choosing to use a single line tended standby diver, please ensure that you have an appropriate length or length of tending line. Now when selecting a tending line, some things are also important to note. You want a more or less neutrally buoyant line in the water. We use this nylon line here. This is a 3 8 inch nylon line. It has a high tensile strength. We recommend using synthetic line. If you have hemp or jute or some other natural fiber, it's not recommended because it rots when it's wet and it has very low tensile strength. So please choose the line appropriate you want to make sure that if you do choose a long length of tending line, that your diver is going to be able to manage that. You'll find as we practice this here in just a bit, that when performing line pull signals on these lines, the longer the line that you have in the water, the more difficult it is to transmit those line pulls across that length. We do not recommend polypro line or a tending line. It floats. If it floats, it can get fouled on lots of different things. Also, once you've chosen the appropriate length of line for your diving operations, it's important to mark that line. We've developed a marking technique here. Because we're using white line, we use three different colors of tape to indicate distance along the length of that line. White tape indicates every 10 feet of our tending line. Because we're dealing with a white tending line, we have to put a piece of black tape prior to the white tape. From zero to five zero feet. 
so that at 20 feet, approximately, I have two white lines and one black line. At three or at 30 feet, I have three white lines and one black line. 40, I have one black line and four white lines. Now, once we reach five zero feet, we change colors. We go to one yellow line. So for us, white lines indicate 10 feet increments. Yellow lines indicate 50 or five zero feet increments. So at six zero feet, what two colors should I see? Yellow and a white. Do I, will I see a black? Why? Because I have yellow. See, you guys are smart. It's awesome. So yellow and white. Now I have that. At seven zero feet, I have a yellow, well I've already passed it, yellow and two white. At eight zero, a yellow and three white. At nine zero, a yellow and four white. And then finally, the third color tape that we use when to indicate length is red. At 100 feet, we should have a single red stripe. And looky, looky, a single red stripe. Now you'll note that we mark our line from the tender, or correction, the diver's end. We start marking from the diver's end. And what we've also done here is we've, before we've started our measuring process, we have kind of a length of line. We'll talk about that here in a minute. So, at 110 feet, what should you see? White. One red and one white. Perfect. At 150, what should we see? Thirty. That's one forty. Bam. One hundred fifty feet. So, white for every ten, yellow for every fifty, red for every one hundred. For our tinning line, we've chosen a five gallon bucket. We've taken the lid and cut a hole in this at the top. There's no real special way to feed line into this. For some reason, just faking it in like this works. You'd think, oh, that's gonna get all tangled up. But nope, it doesn't, it's magic. Because we think positive thoughts. And we translate our positive thoughts into action. And well, the rest is it's just awesome. <laughs> line pull signals. There's 162 different line pull signals that you need to know before tomorrow morning. But there's an easy way to remember some of these. One, if you get one line pull signal, one means stop or are you okay? So stop. Stop, stop, or are you okay? Two line pull signals means give slack. Okay. Three line pull signals means take up slack. Four line pull signals means haul me to the surface. Okay. So that's the easy way to remember those. Um, search, there's seven letters in search. If you launch a diver and you're going to use a line tended sweep search, when the diver enters the water, you give them seven line pull signals, they answer back seven. And the line pull signals mean pretty close to the same, but not exactly. One still means stop, but it's kind of stop and search where you are. It also means are you okay? Two still means give slack, but there's a little bit added on when you're doing search signals. It's the diver's responsibility to keep tension on the tending line when doing a line tended sweep search. Really, it's always the diver's responsibility to keep tension on the tending line. So when you have a diver out there doing a line tended sweep search, they're always trying to swim away from the tending line so that they can receive sharp, snappy line pull signals. In the case of two, two poles give slack. 
when they're on search signals. They're always trying to swim away from you. If you want to send the diver out 10 feet, you give them two line pull signals. They will answer back to you. And then you just slack the line 10 feet and then stop letting out line. If you wanted to bring the diver in when they're on search signals, a diver can only create about five pounds of thrust. So a diver really doesn't weigh anything underwater. You would tell the diver that you're going to give slack, or you could also think of it as adjust distance. The diver's always trying to swim away. You give two line pull signals. If you want to bring them back in, you just pull them back in as far as you want, and then you stop. Now, when on search signals, the diver, when they receive the line pull signals, always faces their tending line. Okay, so all of the signals you send for directions left or right are interpreted by the diver facing the tending line or facing you when they're in the water. So if I was a diver and I received three line pull signals when on search, that means the tender wants me to face my tending line and swim to my right, R-I-T. If, when on line tending sweep search, I received four line pull signals, I would answer back four, and that would mean that the tender wants me to face my tending line and swim to my left, L-E-F-T. So we have seven is go on search, seven is also go off search, one means stop and search where you are, or are you okay? Two means, still means give slack, or you could think of it as adjusting distance. <clears throat> Three means face your tending line and swim to your right, R-I-T, divers can't spell. And four means face your tending line and swim to your left, L-E-F-T. So that's the basic line pull signals you've got. Normal line pull signals are one, two, three, and four. Then if you're on search, there's seven, and one, two, three, four. They're very similar, but they mean slightly different things. There are some other signals. There's line pull signals for emergency situations. One of those is two, space two, space two. And it sounds corny, but this is the easiest way to remember it, and it will work for you. Two, space two, space two means I need you. That means the diver that is line tended needs the assistance of another diver. Three, space three, space three means I am fouled but can clear myself. The only line pull signal that is not answered as given is four, space four, space four. If you ever get four, space four, space four, you need to haul that diver to the surface immediately. That means they are drowning and they need to be brought to the surface. Four space four space four is the only line pull signal that is not answered as given. Other than that, all line pull signals are answered as given. So that's the easy way to remember line pull signals. Why isn't one line pull signal, the shortest line pull signal of them all, haul me to the surface immediately, I'm drowning? Well, if you think about it, it might be the divers working underwater and their line gets tugged a little bit, the next thing they know, they'd be at the surface. So that's why it is a distinct four, space four, space four. Before you tie your line tended standby diver in, you need to secure the top side end of the tending line to an immovable object. To do this, we tie a bowline around the object. Everybody should be able to tie a bowline. If you only know how to tie one knot as a diver, it needs to be this knot. Notice how the tail, or the end of the line, is on the inside of the knot. That stops it from getting snagged on things. And then to secure this, you can tie an additional half hitch around it if you want. Now, before you tie in your standby diver, you need to do a proper pre-dive safety check. There's an entire video devoted to a pre-dive safety check that's done at demonstration speed and demonstration quality, where everything is talked about in great detail. Please go watch that video. Now, your line tended standby diver has to be completely pre-dive safety checked and tied in and ready to enter the water within one minute of notification. The line tended standby diver has to be dressed in 
before you launch your buddy team. Line tended standby diver doesn't give you the option of putting one diver in the water. A line tended standby diver is just that, a standby diver. This diver is for rescue situations. This diver would only be deployed if there was a problem in the water and the buddy team couldn't work together to resolve it. Now, when we go to tie in the line tended standby diver, we need to make sure that the line is tied around the diver's waist. We never tie the line to a piece of equipment that can be removed or pulled free of the diver when they're in the water. Notice that the line goes up above the cummerbund of the diver's buoyancy compensator. And when we tie the line around the diver's waist, we always tie a bowline. A bowline is a knot that won't slip and won't become tight around the diver's waist and make it difficult for them to breathe. Also, when we tie the line around the diver's waist, a good rule of thumb is leave the space of about your fist in between the diver and the knot. That allows them to breathe. After you've done your pre-dive safety check and you've tied the diver in, then you could launch your buddy team that would be going into the water to do work or science. Here we're just going to go through the procedures of how to tend a line tended standby diver. Before you launch your diver, you want to make sure they can make it all the way to the water. So we leave a loop of line, sometimes referred to as a catenary. That way you know the diver can make it all the way into the water. Once the diver makes their entrance, exchange OK signs. Now we're going to send the diver out on the surface. Remember here we're just practicing the procedures for a line tended standby diver. You should pay attention to the line pull signals. A properly tended diver is like fishing. The proper amount of tension on a tending line is enough to where you can feel what the diver is doing, but not interfering with what they're doing. When the diver gets to the bottom, they give a one. Top side answers back with a one. All line pull signals are answered as given. Two, give slack. If slack is given, the diver will swim away from the line. The tender will stop the diver with one line pull signal when they are in the position they want them in. To acknowledge, the diver answers back with one line pull signal. Seven. Seven is search. Remember, all line pull signals are answered as given. That way it's an acknowledgement that it was received properly. Three, when on search, is face your tending line, keep tension on the tending line, and swim to your right, or your RIT. Remember that it's the diver's responsibility to keep tension on the tending line. Two, when on search, two means if slack is given, swim away. If tension is taken, like it's being done here, the tender will pull the diver in until they're in the position they want them in. Four, face your tending line and swim to your left. Remember, this is from the diver's perspective. So the diver will keep tension on the tending line and swim to their left until they get a one pull from the tender. One means stop. Three. From the diver's perspective, that means face your tending line and swim to your right, or your RIT. The diver will swim to their right until the tender stops them with one line pull signal. Line pull signals. They need to be sharp, crisp, snappy signals. If they're long, mushy tugs, it's easy to misunderstand what the tender or the diver is trying to say. It's not being rude to give a sharp, snappy line pull signal. Trust me, everybody would prefer that versus mush being transmitted back and forth. So 
so the diver was just taken off search and now was given a four so the diver will go to proper hand positions and swim to the surface keeping tension on the tending line the reason we do this is the tender can see what's going on top side the tender is controlling where the diver surfaces when the diver gets to the surface they're going to inflate their BC the diver and the tender will exchange OK signs and the tender can do all the work at this point. If this was a rescue, the rescuer, which is the diver in the water, would have just brought the victim to the surface. The rescuer might be a little bit tired. The tender can pull both the rescuer and the victim to the exit point that is the most convenient for everybody. So that's line tended standby diver procedures. Line tended rescue procedures. In order to do this, we're going to create a situation where we are forced to launch the line tended standby diver. So in this video, there's going to be a buddy separation. One diver is not going to make it to the surface. Their buddy that does make it to the surface doesn't have enough air to go down and rescue them. Remember, your line tended standby diver needs to be ready to enter the water within one minute of notification. Before we launched our buddy team, we did a complete pre-dive safety check on the line tended standby diver, tied in the top side end of the line, and tied the line around the diver's waist. So here comes our scenario. The diver comes to the surface, doesn't have enough air to go rescue his buddy. The diver requests assistance or calls for help. At this point, the line tended standby diver needs to enter the water within one minute of notification. The tender gives instructions to the diver to exit the water. The line tended standby diver is deployed. As the rescue diver descends, Rescue diver sees the victim, and when the rescue diver gets to the victim, they're going to give one big line pull signal. It's a sharp, snappy, crisp line pull signal. It's like uppercase. It's like a line pull signal with an exclamation point after it. Now the rescue diver is going to choose to give four uppercase line pull signals. And when you do these four big tugs, that means haul me to the surface. I have the victim. Doing this, the tender does all the work for the rescue diver. Also, the tender is pulling both the victim and the rescue diver directly towards the exit point, saving time. Once the rescue diver gets the victim to the surface, they make them positively buoyant, and they can start doing rescue breaths and stripping equipment. Now the rescue diver still has the line tied around their waist. It's much easier for the rescue diver to untie the line. Remember we tied a bowlin. Everybody should be able to tie and untie a bowlin without looking at it. The rescue diver would untie themselves and then they can swim to the exit point. Remember a line tended standby diver is only used for rescue. A line tended standby diver doesn't allow you to put one diver in the water to do work or science. They're only used for rescue. So this is line tended rescue on search. So here we've launched our line tended standby diver, but the visibility is poor. And the rescue diver doesn't drop right on top of the stricken diver. When the diver gets to the bottom, they give one line pull signal. Realizing the visibility is poor, the diver can request to be put on search, seven line pull signals. And the tender will answer back with seven to acknowledge. And then the tender, using somebody at the surface to help guide, can send the rescue diver using line pull signals on a search pattern to try and find the stricken diver. Sometimes you will have bubbles coming to the surface. Sometimes people will have some sort of a visual reference. So on the first pass, the visibility is so poor the diver doesn't find them. Tender gives two line pull signals, sending the diver out. Remember, it is the diver's responsibility to keep tension on the tending line. 
When the rescue diver finds them, it's one big line pull signal. It's like an uppercase. Because the diver is farther away than the water is deep, the rescue diver in this situation decides to bring the diver to the surface, okay, dropping their weight belt. The diver and the victim will just swim directly to the surface. And then you have a rescuer that is not exhausted, and the tender can pull both the diver and the victim, doing all the work, in on the surface. So here, while the rescuer is being pulled in, the rescuer can work on rescue breaths and starting to strip and tow equipment from the victim. Notice that the tender will bring both the diver and the victim to the exit point that's most convenient for them. Special situations for line tending. You cannot use a line tended standby diver if you're live boating, because then you're putting a diver in the water with a line tied around their waist next to a propeller, or even a jet boat. No live boating with line tended standby divers. Can a non-diver be a tender? Yes, a non-diver can be a tender, but they must go through the same training that you're going through right now. You can't just grab somebody off the deck and say, hey, you're gonna tend this line, because they don't know line pull signals. They're not familiar with diving. Those are some of the requirements. In order to be a non-diving tender, you must be familiar with the diving operations that are going on, and you must know the line pull signals. Other things a non-diving tender must be able to do is do a pre-dive safety check and check the divers before they get in the water. They should also know how to keep logs. Okay. A non-diving tender must be familiar with the diving operations. Before you launch, your buddy team that's gonna do work, you need to have your line tended standby diver tied in and pre-dive checked. So you set that person up first and then you set up your buddy team and you can launch them. What may happen is if you go to launch your buddy team before you get your line tended standby diver ready, they hit the water, there's a problem. You don't have a line tended standby diver ready to go. They're useless. It is the diver's responsibility to keep tension on the tending line when doing line tended sweep search. Okay. The diver needs to constantly try and swim away from the line. The diver shouldn't take loops of line and add it up. Okay. The top side person controls the distance, but the diver needs to constantly try and swim away just a few pounds of thrust so that the line pull signals will be sharp and clear and crisp. The more line that's in the water, the more muffled those line pull signals are gonna be. When giving line pull signals, they need to be sharp crisp snaps. Okay. Mushy line pull signals like this cannot be understood underwater. And a true line pull signal is at least six inches to a foot in length. So a proper line pull signal would look like a snap like that. So you take all the tension out of the line and then it's a quick snap like that. And the response should be a pull back on the line like that. And we didn't make these line pull signals up. These line pull signals are universal throughout the commercial diving industry also the US Navy, and for NOAA. So if you learn these line pull signals, you can go out to a commercial diving site and you can tell what the diver and the tender are talking about using line pull signals. Now, the Simpsons had an episode where they kind of poked fun at the line pull signals. It was Grandpa Simpson had some paintings, I think, at the bottom of a lake. And they had Bart diving over the side of a boat to recover the, the paintings. And they were using line pull signals. And they had like 56 or 57 different line pull signals. But the handful of line pull signals we just went over are the basic ones and the ones you need to know.